Hello, I'm futurist Thomas Fry, and I'm speaking on behalf of Reed Labs based in San Ramon, California. For many years now, I've been predicting the emergence of an AI education system that will radically transform the learning process, and along with it, the institutions we're currently using to educate our society. More specifically, I've been predicting that by 2030, the largest tech company on the planet will be an education-based company that the world hasn't heard of yet. I'm excited to see what Reed Labs will be developing over the coming years to push the envelope of change in the world of education. When it comes to understanding the future of AI, our present is becoming a more distant past every day. For most of us, AI is the magical genie in some invisible box that is redefining a new state of normal on a daily basis. AI is not something that we can touch, we can feel, taste, swallow, or toss back and forth like a ball. Not yet, anyway. Soon it will become part of everyday activities. The change will be so gradual, it will be hard to notice until one day we can't miss it. Changes are only constant. As the rapid onset of AI scales up, every new generation of people will participate in far more unique experiences than ever before. As bystanders, we are on the edge of a technological revolution with such magnitude that we can't even begin to comprehend it. Bit by bit, we are witnessing these confusing shifts happening right under our noses, and we are forced to contend with one new reality after another after another. One of the most important advancements yet to come with AI will be advances in our conversational interface. We're way past the early days of voice recognition for AI, and we're now focused on a conversational interface that has the ability to emulate a, a typical conversation we might have with a real person. Rather than using keyboards and computer displays, our voice and its inflections will become the primary tool we use to interact with the AI-driven world around us. As a first step, we need to build the brains of the robot. Let me explain what I mean by that. Every time we talk to Alexa, Siri, Cortana, or Google, we're building the brains of a robot. Whenever we speak to these devices, we are imparting tiny pieces of human intelligence and over time, with the right kind of neural networks, it will be possible to build the kind of foundational base of knowledge needed to operate our robots in the future. Granted, we are still in the primitive chiseling the stone phase of this transformation, but our verbal exchanges are fueling the early reservoirs of human intelligence that will be needed to power the brains of the robots over the coming decades. To put this in perspective, the robots I'm referring to may be autonomous drones, driverless cars, or actual robots, but this kind of incoming stream of intelligence is what will be needed to separate the blind order-following robots of the past from the emotionally perceptive multi-sensory bots that will be common in our future. In most situations, the robot itself will be one of many kinds of devices powered by different forms of AI-driven automation that we simply plug into in the future. Much like plumbing a house 100 years ago, we'll soon be able to wirelessly tap into hot and cold running AI to drive our devices. I would like to step you through a scenario that takes place two decades from now. Let's consider a typical morning commute in the year 2040. After summoning a car, it arrives quickly, recognizes you, opens the door and says, good morning, Winston, where are you headed off to today? Using facial recognition, it already knows who you are and has a history of your most common destinations, as well as the stops you like to make along the way. But today is different. You respond by saying, I'd like to pick up Mr. Norbit from doggy daycare and take him to my sister's house in North Willows. Mr. Norbit is the Cocker Spaniel that you hate leaving at home while you're gone. Your sister's house is an already a known destination. Would you like to stop for your regular cup of coffee before going to doggy daycare? I see a Tim Hortons along the way. I'm happy to stop there, your car asks. Yes, that would be nice, you reply. 
In this situation, Tim Hortons was suggested because the company paid extra to get premium placement on the car's recommendation engine. Your car proceeds by asking, would you also like to purchase a doggy mat for the back seat as well? After thinking about it, you tell your car, no, he'll be fine sitting on my lap. Since the car is already aware of Mr. Norbit's bladder problem, sensors on the floor mat and seats were given a monitor closely alert. Very well, your car responds. Will you be planning any trips this weekend? Perhaps I was thinking about taking my wife Sally to the Firehouse Bistro on Saturday evening. Your car then asks, would you like me to make a reservation for you at the Firehouse Bistro on Saturday? Excitedly, you respond, yes, that would work. Let's set the arrival time for 6.30 p.m. Your car lets you know it will be contacting them now. Two minutes go by, then it lets you know the only times available for the Firehouse Bistro on Saturday are earlier than 5 p.m. or after 8 p.m. Would you like me to reserve one of those time slots? You think it over and respond, no. See if you can get a 6.30 p.m. reservation at the Capitol Club and also make it a reservation for four because we'd like to take our grandkids, Jonathan and Beverly, along. Very well, I'll contact them now, responds your car. Two minutes go by and your car lets you know the good news. I was able to make a 6.30 reservation at the Capitol Club on Saturday for a party of four. Will you need a car seat for your grandchildren? You respond, yes, I'll need one car seat for Beverly. Once again, this request triggers a sensor alert for possible spillage and other messes. After stopping to grab a cup of coffee at Tim Hortons, You drive by a grocery store and a list of sales items appear on your screen. With a few taps, they are added to your grocery list for a delivery service to drop off at your house this evening. Just like every morning, your regularly scheduled conference call comes up and you find yourself part of discussions about next generation security systems for the office. In this age of self-driving cars, an era when much of the minutia of daily life is regulated to a machine, we can be as busy or as relaxed as we want to be. But overall, autonomous vehicles will free up people's time and attention to focus on other matters while they're moving people from one place to the next. The idea of having a conversational interface with a car makes sense as it will have the ability to understand the primary objective without having to sort through menu options and learn unique features and capabilities. But for this to happen effectively, riders will have to be okay with opening the doors to their privacy settings to allow the car company to have access to their data. Artificial intelligence only works effectively when it has access to vast amounts of data. The human race has an unwritten mandate to pass our rapidly growing base of knowledge and information from one generation to the next. However, the tools we have today are not up to the task. In their present form, libraries are not good enough, schools are not fast enough, and technology still has a poor interface for the human mind. But changes are happening quickly. For all of our children, it's imperative that we understand what kind of world they will inherit. If we understand the world they're entering into, we can better prepare them for the skills they'll need in the future. Young people today will be our future designers, craftsmen, engineers, architects, doctors, dentists, scientists, researchers, politicians, lawyers, retailers, and future business leaders. They will be inheriting a world filled with problems, aging infrastructure, crumbling systems, corrupt governments, radically disruptive technology, ethical dilemmas, and a host of seemingly impossible situations. At the same time, they will be using tools, systems, and techniques that will enable them to be exponentially more capable, productive, and accomplished. We are on the verge of making the transition from the here and now to what comes next, and that's where it gets interesting. Just as a fish has no way of understanding the concept of water, we are immersed in a wave upon wave of an ever-changing future, silently slipping through our reality lens like the hands of time. The needs of now are different from the needs of then. 
And even though we take these imperceptible changes for granted, every future has a way of altering the demands that are being placed before us. Over time, the brilliance of Einstein and Mozart has been replaced with the likes of Stephen Hawking, Elon Musk, and Steve Jobs. And tomorrow's thought leaders will be light years ahead of anyone we can imagine today. No, we are not walking into the future. Rather, the future is pulling us towards it. It doesn't matter whether or not we're defiant, resistant, or determined to maintain the status quo, we are all being pulled into the future. Much like a gravitational force of nature, the demands of the future will happen regardless of how prepared or unprepared we are. In 2012, I was asked to speak at a TEDx event in Istanbul on the future of education. Several times throughout my talk, I touched on the topic of teacherless education. After my presentation, I was approached by an executive at Google who explained why teacherless education was so important to them. He said, our team at Google is looking for ways to educate the people of Africa, but very few people actually want to move to Africa. The conversation was brief, but he framed the problem very succinctly. No, most teachers don't want to move to Africa. They also don't want to move to Siberia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, Alaska, or the Amazon rainforest. There are lots of places teachers don't want to move to. By some counts, we are short 69 million teachers globally, and a full 23% of kids growing up today don't attend any school whatsoever. There simply aren't enough teachers at the right place and the right time to satisfy our growing need for knowledge. In fact, if we continue to insert a teacher between us and everything we need to learn, we cannot possibly keep up with the demands of the future. Let me say that again. If we continue to insert a teacher between us and everything we need to learn in the future, we cannot possibly keep up with the demands of the future. Many of today's most valuable skills will be replaced with new ones. We can only begin to understand those new skills by improving our foresight, visioning, and future forecasting abilities today. Our education systems have been built around just-in-case learning, which ends up being a very poor fit for our just-in-time business world and daily reality. Very little of what we learn in college ever gets put to use in today's business world. For this reason, we're seeing alternative forms of credentialing taking center stage. Certification programs are now competing directly with college degrees. Since they are faster, cheaper, and have the potential to lead to much higher paying jobs, they are making serious inroads. Education is now on the verge of a major transformation and artificial intelligence-based teacherless education systems are quickly taking center stage. This doesn't mean that teachers go away, it just means that they take on a more of a coaching role to interact with the students. Thousands of years of history have us hardwired for human interactions, and this means it will always be a critical component of learning. If we apply AI to teacher bots, the new game will be to find the fastest way to teach students. Over time, using a conversational interface, AIs will learn every student's interest, their proclivities, idiosyncrasies, preferred tools, personal reference points, and how to keep them engaged in learning, even in the face of distractions. AI will know when a person's skills are deficient, what's needed to bring them up to speed, and how and when to schedule their next training, and when they've mastered the new topic. Throughout this training curve, individual learning will begin to scale far faster than anything ever dreamed possible, four times, six times, and perhaps even 10 times faster than anything today. Completing the equivalent of a four-year college degree in one to two months is entirely possible with this new form of AI learning systems. As always, the advantage goes to those who are most prepared, prepared for jobs that currently don't exist, using technology that hasn't been invented yet to solve problems we don't even know are problems yet. The future is ours to create. This is why I'm convinced that by 2030, the largest tech company on the planet will be an education-based company that the world hasn't heard of yet. 
It remains the single largest opportunity in the online world that nobody has quite cracked the code for. We're entering a world that will require higher caliber people to make it work. And it is preposterous for us to think that our existing systems can suddenly start producing better results. Each of us has only one body, one mind, and one life. And whatever we do to increase our skills and capabilities will make each of us more valuable on the world stage. People in the future will view themselves as being in a constant state of improvement. This means that over the coming decades, we will become exponentially more fixable, trainable, repairable, improvable, and even reinventable. It will no longer be about who we are today, but who we have the potential to become. When it comes to education, we have met the enemy and it is us. Ironically, we need to step aside so that AI and automation can help us unlock the person we were truly meant to become.